Um, good morning there to everyone. Um, my name is Martina Argerich. Um, I'm a researcher at the Urban Electric Mobility Initiative. <clears throat> and today I will give you um, kind of a context about our initiatives in Latin America, along with my colleagues, Grace and Ari. Um, and we will be specifically talking about um, Solutions Plus and Access. Uh, let me continue. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I will start um, mentioning that we work um, with a Living Lab approach um, and that we are part of the Urban Living Lab Center. Uh, that is um, collaborate. Uh, yeah, the Urban Living Lab Center is the first collaborating center of UN Habitat and is co-hosted also by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology (MIT) um, and the Technical University of Berlin the, the, uh, TU Berlin and the Wuppertal Institute. Um, in this scheme, also the um, Urban Electric Mobility Initiative is the uh, mobility hub of the Urban Living Lab Center. And I don't know why uh, you cannot see it here, but ah, there, it's there. <laughs> so UEMI is the, um, the mobility hub um, in this scheme. Um, so I will continue telling you, well, a little bit about why um what is oh, what is really um a urban living lab approach and the urban living lab center um the urban living lab center it's kind of a platform a space and a group of projects and initiative that validate um innovative technologies um business models and policy measures uh, through the implementation of um, projects of pilots on the ground. So to make it really simple, it's a platform that tastes innovative solutions on the ground. Um, and apart from the, <clears throat> the partners that I already mentioned, UN Habitat, MIT, TU Berlin and the Wuppertal Institute and UMI, we have also regional and thematic hubs that are hosted by universities. Um, and the, the idea is uh, to develop and, and to enhance local capacities in the field of decarbonization of the transport sector in, in cities. Um, this is our presence in Latin America. We have uh, seven projects with focus on electric mobility, on decarbonization of the transport sector, digitalization of the transport se sector, a collaborative map mapping, um, also e buses and gender and immobility. Specifically in um, in Ecuador and, and in Argentina, we are going to talk a little bit about Solutions Plus and access. And um, after my presentation, Grace is going to go more in, in detail about our pilots um, in Quito. Um, in the framework of Solutions Plus, and Ari is going to do the same uh, for Argentina. So as you may not, uh, Solutions Plus is a project that is uh, already ending. Um, it's going to be, it's going to end at, at the end of, of this year. Um, it's been financed by the European Union um, with, um, with a budget of 20 million uh, euros. Um, we have pilots in Ecuador, Uruguay, Colombia, and also um, pilots in, in Argentina, replication pilots in Argentina. The focus is uh, electric mobility. And as I mentioned, Grace is going to be more in, in depth uh, in this, um, in the pilots in, in, in Quito. And regarding access, um, well, access is a project that is going to start next year, in January next year. We've been developing, we've been already working on that project on the pre-phase, in the preparation phase for the last two years. Um, it's um, an ICI project, International Climate Initiative project, um, funded by the German government, also 20 million euros. Uh, for six countries, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Me Mexico, and Peru. 
uh, the focus is on digitalization of the um, uh, transport sector. Um, and to mention a little bit more, uh, but also <laughs> in general um, about access. And also access, the idea is for access to be like, um, to continue the pilots that we've already developed in, in Ecuador, in Argentina, and to add like the digital layer to some of those pilots. Um, so the structure of the consortium is that it's, um, the process is led by UNEP and the colleagues are uh, the Wuppertal Institute and ITDP. Um, we have also our implementation partners, um, UNDP, uh, UN Habitat, ECLE, UMI, MIT, and CMS. And we, we have also our uh, local partners um, in each country. And um, also to give you like um, an idea of the structure, as I mentioned, uh, it's a project that uh, is present in six countries, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, and Peru. And we as Wuppertal Institute and UMI are going to lead the um, implementation activities uh, in Ecuador and in Argentina. Um, it's a project that has for um, work, work packages. The first one related to the pilots themselves, and the second and the third one related to the subnational and national regulation needed to the implementation of the pilots and also to um, the decarbonization of the transport sec sector uh, in general in those countries. And we will also have um, a regional center where um, all the um, fi findings, reports, and all the um, important information gathered uh, within the five and a half year of duration of the projects are going to be there available for our partners um, in Latin America. So this is a little bit of a short uh, introduction about the Urban Living Lab Center, the Solutions Plus project and access. Um, and now my colleague Grace is going to explain a little bit more about our projects in uh, Quito. Um, and then uh, Ari will continue with the presentation. So thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. Sorry, Grace. Ah. Okay, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks Martina for the introduction to the urban Sorry, I don't know if it is me or I I, I don't hear anything. I can listen either, so. Okay. I don't know. I I <laughs> okay, thank you, Martina, for the introduction. Uh, I was saying I'm the local coordinator for Solutions Plus in Quito, Ecuador, and I'm going to explain you a little bit more in detail of what, what we've been doing here. So we can go to the next slide, please. Ah, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, as the Normal Living Lab Center, we have a different uh, axis of, um, of projects. The first one is about last mile logistics. Uh, we also have been working on the electrification of fleet and public transportation. We also have aligned work uh, regarding mobility as a service. In that sense, uh, we pilot an app uh, for the integrated collection system in Quito. And we also have uh, another topic that is uh, air quality, monitoring and modeling. We also been working as a transversal axis uh, with gender and mobility <clears throat> in all our research. So regarding the Solutions Plus project, we can go to the next slide, please. <laughs> the Solutions Plus mobility pilot has three components. The first one, and 
The most important one is the consolidation of the multimodal uh, hub for electric mobility in the historic center of Quito that has this goal of becoming a zero emission uh, zone in, in, in the city. It's a, it's a vision that the city has, the municipality has. So we want to help to accomplish that goal. In that sense, what we've been doing is, uh, in the first place, we have uh, given uh, foundings mostly to three uh, startups, three startups to build and manufacture uh, locally electric vehicles, light electric vehicles. So we give funding to Bixi Cargo, that is an, uh, an entrepreneur that designed uh, 10 e-cargo bikes that we already piloted last year from December to January of this year, actually. Uh, you can see the, the pictures of the bicycles. We have three models from rear, um, from, from loading, sorry, rear loading, and a long jump type of bicycle. We pilot already those. those. We have also given a financing to uh, Tech to manufacture uh, e-quadricycles, and to Grupo Miral, that is a company that assembles uh, buses, to manufacture uh, four electric minivans that are the, the, the biggest vehicles in our project, at least. Uh, to get to this point, we have made, uh, made a lot of activities uh, with the stakeholders. And in that sense, we received 20 expressions of interest of private companies that were interested in changing the fleet and using our, our vehicles in the historic center. Um, at the same time, we'll be giving uh, technical assistance in different uh, lines of work. Uh, for example, we have given uh, information about the design of the vehicles and the sizing of battery, the, the sizing and the selection of batteries. We did that with Pen Motion and Idiada because we are a consortium of 46 uh, members. So we use the help of our, all of our members. We have also uh, give support on the testing of the vehicles. Actually, that was uh, a work that we did with the Polytechnical School uh, in the sense of the Urban Living Enough Center that we've been working. We have also been working with the uh, Technical University of Berlin and the Design Studio, who designed uh, a theoretical uh, a conceptualization for intermodal uh, corridor for e-mobility in the historic center. We can see the renders on that. Uh, down there, that's the zone of the San Roque market. And we can see like how, how it would work with some uh, tactical urbanism and how can we connect uh, the e vehicles in this area. Uh, we have also given recommendations for logistics and design uh, a model to optimize the uh, routes with the Zaragoza Logistics Center. And that's the, the, the work that we've been doing with Milos and he will explain later with more detail. We have also given recommendations for an ordinance that the municipality is making to regulate this type of vehicles. Okay. We can go to the next one, please. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have done a lot of work with the stakeholders because that's the most important thing if you wanna implement a pilot. So to get this, the, the political support, we've been working with the municipality of Quito mostly with the Mobility Secretariat and the Environmental Secretariat, but with other in institutions that work at the Historical Center. We have also been working with the community. Um, the most important uh, thing about working with the community was to identify the necessities of the area. So we worked with the local businesses to understand how they do their provision and logistics and how could we help to that. Uh, we have also working uh, with uh, neighbor associations and projects such as the Huerta al Centro. And we have also um, asked the pedestrians how much impact did they feel with our vehicles? Because that, that was important when you're working on a pedestrianized area, mostly pedestrians area. Mm -hmm. We have also been working with the private sector, uh, giving the money to the entrepreneurs to manufacture locally the vehicles. But we have also been working with uh, different companies that do provision of uh, goods and services, logistical services in the historic center, so they can be our logistic operators of the vehicles. Uh, there's been also an important uh, work with the academia, and there's where we play a very important role to the project uh, in this context of urban living lab. We've been working uh, with the Escola Politécnica Nacional, 
mostly with the Laboratorio de Análisis de Vehículos de Movilidad Sostenible, LIAMS, that is a laboratory that assess uh, emissions and the performance of the vehicles for us, and El Centro de Modelización Matemática, que reciben ahí aquí, so thank you for that. <laughs> so the Modemat, that is a center for uh, mathematical optimization. And for the design of the pilot, we also work with the Catena, that is an institute for uh, logistic innovation uh, from the San Francisco University. We have also been working with uh, our international organisms such as the IDB, uh, the World Bank, and UNEP to understand what possibilities are of uh, synergies and scale up projects after Solutions Plus. Next slide. Uh, regarding the results, and I think this is the most important part, to develop the, the first phase of the pilot with the 10 electric uh, bicycles for, for cargo, we designed four operating schemes. The first one was uh, for a point-to-point -point type of logistics, uh, working with um, local, local markets and places that uh, mostly give the provisions to restaurants and hotels in the area. So in that sense, we work with two logistic operators. We work with the Association of Bike Messengers of Quito that actually they were yesterday here <laughs> talking with us. And we also work with uh, a fruit and vegetable vendor located in the central market of Quito with an estivador. In the second operating scheme, we work with a specific restaurant that has uh, his own his own storage and kind of a cross docking center located also in the historical center. And the thing is that the restaurant is located on a pedestrianized street. So they had a lot of challenges moving uh, things around and they use also the vehicle. Uh, the third operating scheme was done with uh, courier uh, companies. So in that sense, we work with Grupo Entregas that are the representatives of FedEx in Ecuador. And we also work with Urbano Express. Uh, with them, we tried a scheme using, using a cross-docking platform that was a private parking lot located in the historic center that we rented during the pilot, during the two months of pilot, where the motorbikes used to arrive, park, consolidate all the packaging that, that they were going to uh, deliver all around the historic center, and then they uh, used to take the, the electric bikes and do the deliveries all around. The fourth operating scheme was done with uh, two recyclers associations, the Asociación de Recicladores Unidos, Asorre Un, and Buena Esperanza de Pichincha, that is an association that works with the municipality of Quito, of Quito with them here, that is the company that manages and uh, does waste management in Quito. So regarding the, the most important results in the two months of pilot, uh, Sadly, we only have had one accident. It wasn't that bad. It was a little turn, turn <laughs> over, but yeah, the, the, the driver was fine. But she was uh, a woman and after that, she didn't want to use the, the bike again. And we had to find another uh, driver. So that also gave us like this red flag that we need to work more on empowering women in using this type of vehicles. Uh, we, went to 144 points for regulation of, of waste. Uh, in the two months of pilot, we made 229 uh, travels. We collected 16 tons of, of cargo, uh, 956 packages with an average of 19 packages a day. Uh, we have measured a uh, potential of a uh, reduction in emissions of 491.74 kilograms of CO2. And uh, we travel a total of 1,071 km kilometers in the two months. And then if we check out the results divided by operating scheme, we can see that all the, all the vehicles uh, showed a, an increase in the efficiency of the deliveries, mostly reducing the time for uh, and giving the deliveries and also increasing uh, the packages delivered by travel for the capacity that the, the cargo bikes have. So in general, uh, we did an impact assessment and five of the, of the seven logistic operators said that they would like to keep using the solution. And uh, the efficiency is, is 
very good in all the schemes. Uh, it's very interesting to see the cases of the stevedore and the uh, waste recyclers because they actually also increase uh, how much money they make an hour and monthly. And we see that there's a lot of potential for replication and scalability. Uh, at this point, we have given the 10 e-bikes on permanent custody. So that means that the bikes keep, uh, keep circulating in, in Quito, in the Historic Soul Center. And the, the bikes that receive the bike messengers associations, that th those ones, they um, travel the whole city, not only the historical center. <laughs> we have an, a report with, the, with all the results of the, of the pilot. Uh, we have processed GPS information that all the bicycles use uh, sensors to monitor air quality that also had a GPS. So we have that information. We have done interviews and also surveys uh, to the pedestrians and to all to the logistic operators, the drivers and the customers, the final customers that uh, receive the products in our bicycles. And we have the report. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we are pending on implementing the phase uh, two and phase three with the bigger vehicles, and that uh, we're gonna do that on the first time as the, the first quarter of next year because uh, Solutions Plus it's going to extend until June 2024. And yes, I think that will be it. Uh -huh. You can go with access, Martin. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, Ari, if you are there to present Access Buenos Aires. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, well, I will briefly present you about our um, activities in, in Buenos Aires. Um, as you may know, uh, Argentina, Buenos Aires is not a part of the Solutions Plus a project, but uh, we have selected that location for doing uh, replication activities. We're also working together with the city uh, government uh, drafting a roadmap for the uptake of light electric vehicles for urban logistics. So we are applying all the knowledge that we are gathering in Quito and Ecuador uh, to see how it would apply to other geographies the region, also considering that uh, in the access project, Argentina is uh, an active part of it. So uh, the vehicles you see on, on the left, uh, those yellow vehicles, uh, has been that they have been granted um, in the framework of the replication activities of Solutions Plus to the Correo Argentino, which is the national post uh, postal company services uh, in Argentina. They have a sustainability uh, department who, which always tries new technologies and processes. So uh, we found this, uh, we launched an open call. They apply with this idea of trying two L6 uh, vehicles, which are those that you see uh, for the parcel distribution in, in selected areas in the in the city of, of Buenos Aires. So uh, these two vehicles were manufactured in Argentina and uh, they started rolling in the city, uh, I think it was a month ago. So while we are waiting for some um, monitoring and, and analysis of their performances, I had already some um, uh, unofficial talks with the operators and we were discussing about the challenges right of, of this kind of vehicles and and the uh, for example uh, once the vehicle had to be towed back to the to the hub because it's stranded uh, it was stranded without energy uh, there was a second time in which they they had to stop in a in a school uh, and ask for the to connect the the vehicle to charge the batteries in order to continue. So while we have some fabric uh, manufacturer specifications, the real conditions and operating conditions uh, differ. So these are the findings that we are getting and 
of course, uh, we will wait for the final um, results, right? And uh, this would be in the framework of Solutions Plus, but the idea is that uh, through access, um, a project on the digitalization of, of for, the, for the decarbonization of transport, we will add um, a digitalization layer to this pilot. So the idea, as you see in this, uh, in, in Buenos Aires one, is to add a fleet tracking and dynamic road planning system for these vehicles, but also for diesel uh, internal combustion engines vehicles um, that would enable higher operational standards and lower emissions uh, for the postal services. And yeah, this is briefly the pilot that we are running. And in the second, in the second image, you see a typical route for the distribution of parcels. This always depends on, on the on on a, it changes on on a daily basis. So an intelligent route planning, uh, the mathematical model, for example, taking decisions in real time that. Um, consider traffic, uh, that consider a battery, uh, considers distances to the hub and so on, uh, is highly desirable for for applying um, more efficient operations with electric vehicles. So, yeah, I think it's important or interesting to, to, to show you all this information. I know you work with mathematical models and uh, yeah, this is what we are doing right now uh, in Buenos Aires, and we expect to continue uh, in the coming the coming year as well. Um, I think that this would be the most um, uh, interesting uh, component about the Buenos Aires activities to, to present today, Martin. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Ali and Grace. Um, so that would be, I will stop sharing now. Yeah. So um, if you have any questions, we are available now or at the end or via email. And well, um, I don't know who, who is the next one to present with me. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Martina. Thank you, Grace, and thank you, Ari. Uh, yeah, according to the program, uh, well, first, is there anybody having any questions? No. Okay. Then I think we go to the second presentation, which is the group of Politecnica that will be presented by me. Uh, uh, yeah, give me a minute to, put, to share the screen. Can everybody see the screen now? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, then I think we are right. Uh, well, um, as I said, I, I'm, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, the groups that are working here in. in, in uh, in Politecnica from the ma uh, mathematical modeling side, because there's also a group of engineers working uh, as, as, uh, as Greg said in the beginning, working from the more, uh, uh, part, uh, from the part of the, the, the vehicles itself, themselves. So the engineering parts and uh, mechanical, electrical engineers. Uh, we are, uh, what uh, I am talking today about the, the uh, people working from the, uh, optimization point of view uh, from the system itself. So, um, and these are basically also two groups: the uh, um, uh, Centro de Modelización Matemática, the Modemat, where uh, we are now here, 
and a, a research group in the Department of Mathematics um, that it's called the Grupo de Optimización Discreta Combinatoria y de, y de Investigación de Operaciones, also called for short or core. Um, and the intersection of these two groups is large. So we are mostly the same pro professors, but, but uh, uh, we have some different tasks. So uh, uh, first, uh, the model map is a, a, modeling, uh, uh, a mathematical modeling center that was founded uh, in 2013. It is located in the Politecnica, but it has national scale. So the, the, the directory of the Modema uh, is the rector of the Politecnica, uh, is the vice, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the directory of the Modema is uh, the rector of the Politecnica, plus the, sec the National Secretary of Science, plus the, uh, an elected researcher. And uh, it, it, uh, the Modema should function in such a way as to share uh, its capabilities with all universities in Ecuador and all the research installations. The aim is to develop uh, new mathematical models and uh, solution algorithms for industry, engineering, and science and society in general. Um, we have uh, like uh, these uh, um, topics of, uh, of research that, that we deal with uh, mostly. Uh, so these, these are mathematical topics like uh, uh, partial differential equations, optimal control, numerical analysis, discrete optimization, and research operations research. And we also have uh, uh, applications of this. Uh, of this. Uh, so what we do is apply research. So uh, everything we research in these topics is usually related to some uh, some kind of specific applications. So, and these are like uh, uh, models for for uh, weather forecasting, uh, models for ep epidemiology, um, simulation of fluids uh, of movement and fluids. For for instance, here in Ecuador we have many volcanoes and studying how lava will flow in an eruption is, is uh, interesting for us. And also, of course, modeling of uh, optimization and, and transportation and logistics, uh, which is what uh, uh, gathers us together. So mm, we are uh, today here, the people from Politecnica mostly uh, uh, works on, uh, uh, that are present here, mostly work, uh, we work in, in these uh, topics in blue, so discrete optimization, operations research, with, which are applied them to um, models in transport and logistics. See, this, this is a, a collage of the people in modern math. So we have uh, uh, professors, we have postdocs, uh, 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 researchers, um, PhD students, master students, also uh, students. <laughs> And uh, of course, technical uh, stuff and administrative stuff that, that helps us. Um, so, and uh, we also have in the other group uh, the the odd core from the math department. This blue uh, guy in, on the on the right, I mean, the one there. No. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 <laughs> is, uh, is the logo of, of the of the, the of the math department, and uh, uh, in this case, it's a group of professors that, that we work. Uh, except for for uh, Andres, which is in the top right, uh, who is now a PhD student in Edinburgh, but working with uh, used to, uh, still uh, works with us. So, uh, uh, regarding what we do, uh, I want to highlight just. Due to the time, just three uh, uh, projects that could be related in the access framework uh, that are, have been done in Modemat or in the in the core group or together. Um, we do. Uh, there are some models for uh, weather for forecasts uh, that are worked by the uh, by the colleagues working in a continuous optimization and optimal control. Uh, they have produced. Uh, they they are using WRF and uh, have pro been producing uh, weather forecasts for. Um, uh, for uh, Ecuador in three, um, in three domains. So uh, from left to right, you have a domain uh, which is uh, the, the this region of South America. So you can see there from Panama, more or less, in the south, in the in Peru in the south, and also the, the ocean. And this is done with a with a mesh of uh, sixteen kilometers in in. in uh, in resolution, then there is uh, the second domain is uh, continental Ecuador with a mesh of four kilometers, and the third domain is uh, the, the central part of the Andean region of Ecuador uh, where Quito is located with a, a more uh, refined mesh of one kilometer, and uh, they produce this uh, this forecast every day um, in 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 steps of one hour. So uh, actually. 
these are uh, movies that the, the the photos that you see were intended to be movies in the beginning, but something happened in translation to PDF and the movement was not. So you uh, you will see uh, what happens. This is a uh, this is how how the weather is forecasted at five a.m. Then it will be at six, at seven, and so on. Uh, and it goes uh, all day long. And this uh, for this we use a, a high performance computing installation that is uh, administrated by Modemat. And uh, each day there, there has to be a processing time for, for, for producing this forecast of between 45 and, uh, minutes and one and a half hour. So, uh, another, um, uh, how is this related to access? Of, of course, this the same uh, uh, models uh, and uh, the same software tools can also be used to study uh, how, uh, uh, not, not the same, more complicated ones, but related to this. It can be used to study how uh, pollutants uh, um, flow in the air, how, how they disperse uh, uh, due, to, uh, due to atmospheric condition or currents and so on. And uh, the idea will be uh, uh, to apply these models for monitoring and, and, and predicting uh, air quality in the, in the steady areas. So uh, the, the second thing that uh, uh, is of course related to access is the, the optimization of public transportation. Um, um, Usually, this uh, involves a set of steps that, that goes from the more strategic ones to the more operative ones. For instance, uh, they are uh, these boxes on top of the on the on top of the the, uh, uh, the slide. So, from demand modeling, network design, line planning, uh, uh, passenger routing. Um, uh, how to say it? Time tabling, time tabling, yeah, right. Time tabling, vehicle assignment, and, and driver assignment. Um, uh, all of this, in, uh, each one of this is uh, for, or for each one of this, there is a mathematical model that you can study. We uh, we try to formulate uh, models based uh, usually on integer programming approaches. Uh, we study the, the property of these models, of these problems, their computational complexity, and we try to develop then uh, uh, efficient algorithms for the solution. And finally, all of this goes into trying to apply this uh, computationally on, on real data. Um, the first two steps, demand modeling and network design, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, intended to be with very, very large, uh, 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 I mean, they are strategic decisions that are taken in, in for, for frameworks that are uh, very large. For instance, we are talking about tens of years or something like that. In the case of Quito, the modeling of the demand has already been done uh, um, by consultants. To, to, uh, recently, uh, they, there is a consultant that delivered a, a, a plan maestro de movilidad, uh, Cali Mayor, who, uh, who, uh, who finished, I think, November 2022, so one year before, uh, there is this new information, say, and with this, we plan to start from, from the phase of line planning uh, upwards to the more operative phases. We have experience already uh, working on, on line planning and uh, uh, vehicle assignment in, in formal projects with the municipality of Quito. Uh, and I think uh, access, the access project will be a good framework to try to uh, take this uh, on and, and continue uh, uh, researching in this area. So uh, the situation now uh, in Quito is we have this ordinanza 17 from 2019 or 2020 that intends to, to, uh, to create an integrated system uh, for public transportation in Quito from all the more or less independent subsystems that are operating now uh, that uh, will start operating very soon. I think the metro starts operating tomorrow here in Quito. Uh, and for this, there are three uh, um, dimensions of integration that I thought in this uh, in these things. So physical integration of by, uh, by building uh, infrastructure that make it possible to switch from one mode of transportation to another. So buses delivering people to the metro or vice versa. Um, uh, then this uh, tariff integration so that you can pay uh, a single ticket for moving uh, in all the subsystems. And uh, what uh, uh, gathers us more, uh, the, the, what is more related to our world, uh, the operational of course, the, the, the operational integration. That means 
how to manage this system, this multimodal system, and how to plan and, 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 uh, and, and do this optimally. Uh, the aim of all those is, uh, is of course, to, to uh, promote the transition to clean energies in, in urban mobility. Uh, so in the term, in the framework of, of access, as I said, we, like, we intend to look at these uh, phases of the transport planning uh, and to, the, the, to develop for them uh, optimization models and, uh, and air quality models using the capabilities that we have in the odd core group and in the modern math group. Uh, and the last project that I want just to briefly mention that will be dealt in more detail in, in Emilio's presentation is uh, what we have also been cooperating uh, in the framework of, uh, with the colleagues of the Solutions Plus project. Um, uh, the, our idea was to research these models for uh, electric vehicle routing uh, from a more, uh, let's say, not, not, not yet uh, from, coming to the application itself, but uh, more, uh, more from theoretical uh, uh, point of view. So we want to look, uh, there, there are already in the theory, uh, many models proposed for routing electric vehicles. Basically they take into account uh, things like autonomy of the vehicles, uh, autonomy of the um, capacity of the battery. Uh, but uh, we haven't seen so much models that take into account the, the steps of the road. So more or less, our models are designed in uh, with mind that the that the, 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 the cities are flat, and Quito is well, mostly the, the historical center of Quito is all by flat, so it's like uh, almost a hill, so uh, or the side of a hill, and um, this can affect uh, considerably the, the 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 battery consumption. Uh, um, um, depending on the load of the vehicle and the, ve uh, the velocity of the vehicle, and of course on the on the on the uh, on the on the slope of the roads. Uh, so we are considering these uh, factors into the models. We are uh, also looking at what happens if if the driver chooses, for example, the shortest path between two clients, or what happens if he chooses the path where he he or she will consume. Uh, the le uh, less battery. The, the, these are uh, usually not the same path. So, and uh, with this, we are we are trying to get some first results. And Emilio will uh, go into details what we, we have done there. Okay, and I think yeah, that was all. And uh, thank you very much, if I think you are there for your attention. <laughs> Should I continue, Luis Miguel? Yes, give me a minute. I'm trying to, right. to stop ah, here. Yeah. yeah. I, I try I, to share my screen. Yeah, try it, please. Okay. Okay. I think now you can see my screen, right? Yes. Um, right. Just let me introduce you now. Uh, now we are uh, having a simple the presentation, but by Juan Jose. Juan Jose uh, Miranda Brown. He is a professor at the Business School in the Universidad Torcuato di Tella, and uh, they, uh, he will now introduce uh, uh, his group and uh, what uh, they are doing there. So Juan Jose, welcome to Quito Italy. Thank you very much. It is really nice to be here. Thank you very much, Luis Miguel and Martina and all the people from uh, the Escuela Politecnica and also from the ULLC for, for letting me introduce uh, our group. So just briefly, I, I will introduce, I, I hold a PhD in computer science from the University of Buenos Aires. And I, I will explain the, the characteristics of, of our group in a few slides. And I've been working for the last 15 years mostly on operations research and advanced optimization algorithms with applications to last mile logistics and, and specifically uh, by incorporating uh, congestion effects. So how does the congestion affect um, the, the, the tactical and the operational planning, right? Um, so the idea is, my presentation will be very short. Uh, I, I will, I, I've been collaborating with uh, Luis Miguel and Emilio uh, during the last year on, on this, 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 this problem with electric vehicles he, he mentioned. I also 
had a few meetings with Martina. So um, from the university, from our university, we are um, we found this project really really interesting, and I think we can contribute uh, with our knowledge and experience. So the idea is just to present uh, the main members of our group and some of the uh, expertise we have uh, and how we can contribute to the to the to the project. Um, so. Briefly, our university is a small private university here in Buenos Aires. Uh, the University of Cuatro was founded in 1991. I am professor here since uh, 2016. Um, this is, we are a small private university, but we have a great commitment with research activities. Um, the, the, the academic uh, performance and our commitment with research put us in a, as one of the most prestigious uh, universities in, 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 in Argentina. This is also reflected in the fact that uh, our faculty is, um, has a, we have full-time professors and part-time professors, but the share of full-time professors dedicated to, to research, as, as it is my case, it is really, really important. And we are also always fostering good quality and, and reduce research activities, and we we aim to publish in, 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 in top tier journals. And also, as we work in a business school, our research is uh, strongly motivated and, and, and connected with uh, real, real world applications. So this is some, 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 some what our, our, our perspective on, on, on research. And we also have, and we have a strong network of research collaborations, but we are, we are always trying to, to expand these collaborations. We have collaborations well, now more informally with, with, with the Politecnico in Ecuador through, through my, my, my connection with Luis Miguel, but also with uh, universities in Europe and in the United States and also other universities here in, in Latin America. So just to give you an overview on, on, the, on, the, on the scope of the university in terms of the uh, educational programs, I think that there are, knowing a little bit about the scope of the uh, access and the uh, and the Urban Legal Lab Center. I think there are a few undergrad, undergraduate uh, degrees that are connected. So we have two standard bachelors in economy and, and business economy, which may be connected, thinking more on the business side of the problems. Also, there is like a new, um, there is a new undergraduate career which is uh, a bachelor in called in digital technologies. Essentially, and, and very briefly. It has a strong core of computer science mixed with uh, business and innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, we are going to have our first, um, uh, the, the, the first graduate will be next year. So I, I've been teaching in, in, this, in this career this year, early these years and we, I teach algorithm design. So it, is, it has like a good mix between uh, core computer science and mathematical modeling uh, concept with um, uh, with business oriented and management oriented uh, and a management oriented perspective, at the graduate level uh, we have a, a graduate program which is I, I am the director of this program uh, right now, which is the Master in Management Personalytics. This is essentially a, a master program focused um, on developing. Uh, reduce data science and machine learning and operational research also uh, skills and our main uh, students are in general industrial engineers or uh, bachelors in economics um, and, and this kind of profile which have a sort of quantitative uh, basic uh, uh, study they have a, some quantitative basic quantitative exposure but they want to get deeper into the world of uh, data and business and, 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 and analytics. So in, in the slide, I put artificial intelligence in the, in the broad sense. So I, I'm thinking that operations research is within artificial intelligence. And this is not yet official, but it is, it is approved internally and we are doing the, the, the formal uh, administrative steps with the ministry. Uh, we expect next, next year to have a, a PhD program on applied science and technology. And the idea is to um, develop a, a graduate program focused on applied research, on research with applications on technology management. And the, I think that this 
uh, routing problems and planning problems and the carbonization and sustainability and the, the, the intersection between all these areas would fit perfectly uh, within this project. So this is like um, this is like a promise. So this is not something that is already official, but uh, we are uh, we are positive about the, the the approval of this program. It will be a small program. Uh, we we are trying to we, we are aiming to have to, to to produce high quality research and high quality uh, technology transfer to 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 to, to, this, to the private sector. So we are not intending to to have like a very large program. It will be very selective in the in the application process. Uh, I think that uh, I will probably be part of the academic committee. Uh, so these are the the, the the main ideas so far, and I think this could be also uh, a good. Um, a uh, framework, a good place to, to develop some of these initiatives. Regarding our group, so essentially I'm, I'm just mentioning here the four uh, senior uh, members. This is a group that we are forming so far. Gustavo Vulcano, he's, he, had, he, he did his PhD in Columbia University. He's uh, actually the dean of the, the academic dean of the, of the business school. And um, he's like one of the big names internationally on revenue management and pricing and, and dynamic management of, of, of capacity. So he has a lot of experience and, a, and, extremely, and an excellent track record on, on publications on this topic. Um, I, uh, I am an associate professor um, on, also on, on, on operations research as I presented myself. And my main research area is uh, algorithmic design for uh, last mile deliveries, and especially working with uh, congestion effects. Javier Marenko joined this uh, year. Javier is also, also uh, a known friend of, of, of Luis Miguel. Actually, he was uh, our connection point. Um, he also has a PhD in computer science from the University of Buenos Aires, and he has a lot of experience on polyhedral combinatorics and discrete optimization. And finally, Luigi Laporte joined recently in August. He's a PhD candidate uh, on operations management at the EU University. And he works on, but he's a full professor uh, here. He's doing his PhD part time, but he has a lot of experience in consulting and also works on demand modeling and and for retail and and, and, and transportation. So essentially, we have we are like four senior uh, researchers uh, with different profiles, but all all can be uh, considered within operations research and operations management. And we somehow complement each other on, on different uh, areas. So the areas on which we have expertise, uh, pricing and revenue management, mostly uh, Luigi and, 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 and Gustavo. Also, I did some, some work uh, on my early uh, research uh, topics on revenue management, but we have experience on revenue management. Revenue management, very, very briefly, is how you manage a capacity which is perishable. So essentially, how do you put prices to fix in the in the market, right? So and that there is a lot of demand modeling and how to manage uncertainty in this process. In that in that case, in order to maximize revenue, um, we have a lot of knowledge in different sites on logistics and operations, like supply chain management and inventory control. Then from more from the methodological side and the algorithmic side, we have a, a, a lot of expertise in discrete and combinatorial optimization, mostly uh, Javier and I. We are both, we both work with integer programming, mathematical modeling, algorithmic design, heuristics, large scale optimization. And this is like our core uh, research area. And then if we go uh, to another uh, group of applications, we have papers on vehicle routing, scheduling, uh, network design with applications in general to, to, to routing and to transportation, but also on scheduling and timetable and other uh, uh, specific uh, sub -areas. Um This is like a, a big overview on our, our expertise regarding the research areas and problems and methodology. But I also wanted to highlight uh, our approach to this and our expertise. Uh, we, we always aim to, to, to publish in top tier journals, so we are being rigorous about that. And this is what we do. I will show you some, some examples in the next slide. But I will, given the, the nature of the access and the UALLC uh, projects, I also wanted to give you some idea of another characteristic of our profile is that we do consulting 
uh, as, a, as an independent activity. And we have experience with applied projects. So um, both, uh, all of us, Gustavo, Luigi, uh, Javier and I, we all do consulting. For instance, right now I am acting as a subject matter expert for the applied intelligence uh, team of Accenture Argentina. And Gustavo did applied projects with Aerolíneas Argentinas and, and Luigi as well and, and Javier as well. We, we, we all have like our practical uh, profile, our practical side also developed. So we, we are focused on research, but we also know which are the difference between the practical uh, practical implementations and, and, and research activities, which are not, not necessarily uh, aligned always, right? So then you have different incentive, you are answering different questions, times and budgets are different as well. Um, I need just to give you an overview of some recent papers from the from this year. The first one is on revenue management. If you have to, how, how you manage some uh, uncertainty when you are dealing with uh, perishable capacity, like it could be a season plane, and you have, um, you, you, you don't know exactly which is your capacity. There may be changes on that. Essentially, this paper goes on uh, if you need to sell seats on a plane, but you do not know exactly which is the capacity of the plane, you may have 100 seats or maybe 120, how do you incorporate this in a, in a, in a, in a dynamic uh, framework? Um, this is a paper on a very methodological uh, algorithm using integer programming for a combination of a routing problem, which also has uh, a, a sort of scheduling side and capacity management. So you see, but it's a very, very complex problem. This is a paper which I, I work and I would like to highlight this paper because it is very aligned to what Ali was saying originally. This is the branch of the price, it's just the type of the algorithm, but essentially what we did here is we work with synthetic data. It was, this is a more theoretical paper uh, and more methodological paper um, where we propose an algorithm for a last mile delivery problem. So we were designing a tactical plan, distribution plan for a fleet of vehicles where we incorporate the, the, the congestion effect through time-dependent travel times. Essentially, when you go from one point to the other, the times may vary depending on the time of the day you are making that trip. So essentially, this captured congestion. Um, but instead of working with uh, internal combustion uh, uh, vehicles, so standard vehicles, we consider electric vehicles. And the problem with electric vehicles is exactly what uh, Ari was saying, is you have a battery, and the battery has a driving range which may be affected because the specification is not good, which was the case he, he was mentioning. But also, um, the thing is that the standard approaches in the literature for the vehicle routing problem assumes that the discharge of the battery depends linearly on the distance problem. And this is not, not real. So we propose a more general approach where we incorporate the congestion. The, the discharge of the battery depends on the speed you travel, the temperature, if you are using or not the air conditioning, the steep of the roads, as Luis Miguel said, and you have many, 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 many components. We we incorporated one, and we said, okay, we have a model, and we use specific literature to incorporate the model when we incorporate the travel speed. So if I travel at the larger speed, well, then, then it actually it is a concave function. But if you if I travel at the larger speed, the speed you consume more energy. If I travel at the slower speed, I consume less energy. So. How does the congestion affect the affect the, the the discharge of the battery? And the thing is that when you are working on last mile logistics and you have a vehicle routing with a limited driver driver range, from a from an operational point of view, there, there are some uh, operational constraints. For instance, this client must be visited between uh, noon and two p.m. So I need to travel fast. But if I travel fast. The battery is discharged and it discharges faster. So maybe I run out of energy. So you have like opposite incentives in terms of your operational quality of service versus the capacity of the battery. So essentially, we studied what all paper, what, what, what does essentially is it studies the problem, we formulate the model, we develop some a state of the art algorithm for this problem. What we also studied the, the implications of this, of the congestion on the on the on the operations. Uh, using synthetic data, we do not have uh, real world data for this problem. But what we saw essentially is that if you make your distribution plan, assuming that you dis the discharge is, depends only on the distance, 
uh, you can get uh, between 30 and 40 percent of your routes, which are infeasible. Infeasible it means I execute the plan and at some point I run out of energy, so the vehicle gets stuck there, and this is very costly from a from a distribution point. So this is this is like a contribution which is very aligned to what uh, Ari was saying. Um, we have some open research plans for, as, as continuations of this, this project. And finally, um, a paper by Luigi, which has essentially he works on demand modeling in retail. And I want just to connect, essentially I work on discrete optimization mostly and last mile vehicle routing. And I'm used to think about reducing cost. And there is a combination between, there is like a, a lot of room to, 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 to propose new solutions that also affect the decarbonization of the last mile or the first mile or the transportation in general, which is, we are usually, when we think about vehicle routing, we usually think about minimizing costs. So, but there are some other ideas which are relevant and that they are being deployed in, in practice, which is for instance, one way to reduce the, the 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 transportation cost and the distance traveled for the careers is we can add bloggers, right? Like Amazon, you can deliver your product not to your house but to your locker. So if you deliver a lot of product to your locker, then you are consolidating the last mile, and this translates into, into a reduction of the distance travel. Well, when you have a locker, you have a sort of revenue management problem, which is which has not been uh, deeply studied in the literature. How can you price uh, a place in a local to deliver a product? These are some lines that we are starting to discuss internally, yet not with a, research, a, a concrete research problem. We, we are having discussion on how to combine well-known techniques from uh, dynamic capacity management and how, does, how this can be integrated into last mile or first mile also uh, logistics. So this is essentially a presentation. Thank you very much for that. I hope I did not use too much time. And of course, I'm open to questions. And we are really looking forward to collaborate if you think we can contribute in, in some way. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Juan Jose. Uh, so uh, are there any questions? So if not, I, I would suggest we make a short uh, pause from five minutes just to um, to do here some technical things we need to, to, to load the, the next presentations and so on, which are done. And we continue in the, in the five minutes. We continue at uh, 10, uh, uh, let's say we continue at half past 10, eight minutes, it's okay? Okay, have you <laughs> still seen my, my, my screen? No, 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 Great. your screen, no. No, okay. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say like a small thing. Yeah, um, Juan Jose, it's it's very interesting what you just presented, and yeah, we met a couple of times, and I think uh, your specific specific work it's like very aligned to what we are working uh, within Access. Um, so I think that we we can continue <laughs> discussing this collaboration because. Um, I think that it's really aligned. And regarding the paper, it's is it uh, already published or because I saw 2024? Ah, uh, no, we cannot hear you. You are muted, Professor. Sorry, uh, uh, it is already published. I, I can send it to you via email. Please. Yeah, okay. yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> Okay, let's meet time thirty again.
Uh, hi again, everybody. Let's continue. Uh, can you hear us well? And see how, see the slides. Yes, perfectly. Yeah, okay, then let's start. Uh, we start now with the uh, technical part of the workshop, uh, with the technical academical part of, part of the workshop. And uh, let me introduce you, uh, Professor Milos Milos Milenkovic from the University of Belgrade, in Serbia. Uh, Milos has a PhD in technical sciences in traffic and uh, transportation. His research areas lie in mathematical optimization, in predictive, uh, predictive optimal control theory, time series analysis, uh, and things as project management and economic engineering related to transportation. He's also advisor for, uh, is a member of the advisor board of, board of some journals, like the International Journal of Uncertainty, Fuzziness, and Knowledge-Based Systems, um, the Journal of Applied Mathematical Modeling, and also uh, the well-known Journal of Transportation Research, uh, Part E. So, Milos, welcome to Quito physically this time. <laughs> and and uh, I uh, give it uh, the, the, the authority. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Thank you all. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure to, to, uh, to be present and to, let's say, share my knowledge and our, um, let's say, uh, results uh, regarding this, uh, this problem, the, the problem of first to last mile, um, let's say, uh, sustainable um, uh, distribution in a uh, logistic distribution in Quito. As Luis mentioned, these are the data, I don't know, from where, which source did you? Yeah. But yes, uh, yes, uh, mostly uh, uh, you were. Right. Yes. Uh, I'm working. Uh, I'm working uh, at the Faculty of Transport and Traffic Engineering, uh, University of Belgrade. I also spent uh, six years at ZLC. Um, um, actually, uh, this project is I started uh, this with this project um, during my my engagement there. Yeah. Uh, the Faculty of Transport at the University of Belgrade in general is, uh, let's say, a very uh, respective institution. It is uh, It belongs to a top 300 of your world universities, according to Shanghai's ranking. Uh, on the other side, ZLC is a uh, very uh, competitive and very well-known uh, institute uh, uh, with very, very good results in academics, in research. Um, of course, uh, any kind of information you can find on, on my, of course, on my web page actually, but also on on, uh, on um, websites of this uh, these institutions. Even even uh, that to see uh, since I'm now officially a collaborator, um, I will present here uh, the whole approach uh, related to uh, uh, let's say uh, introducing the the light electric freight vehicles in a, a first last mile, let's say last mile and also first mile uh, logistic system of Quito. Um, the approach and also the, the uh, I will just, uh, uh, let's say, emphasize the most important details regarding the hardware, the hardware, the software, uh, and uh, the policy, uh, the policy, uh, let's say, uh, perspective. So, uh, as you can see, uh, I already mentioned, so uh, the, the, the whole, uh, let's say, approach uh, includes uh, a, a number of different perspectives, different aspects and uh, different, uh, let's say, problems. Uh, the problem of hardware uh, that includes uh, the hubs. Uh, of course, all these problems must be uh, considered uh, during the practical uh, implementation, but also they are very good sources of uh, and challenging fields for a different kind of, uh, let's say, uh, um, academic or uh, research um, adventures. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Calvert perspective has, for example, uh, the problem of uh, of the hubs, of their location, of their uh, uh, sizing, of their composition in terms of internal uh, structure. Also, uh, light electric freight vehicles, uh, the, the fleet composition, that means actually fleet sizing and fleet mix, uh, very important, uh, very important, uh, let's say, aspects of the problem. Actually, 
all these uh, components uh, uh, determine the, the, the sustainability of the solution and the market penetration of the solution. So none of these components can be considered independently uh, without taking into account other components and et cetera. Uh, charging infrastructure also, uh, where to locate the charging stations? Do we need the charging stations? So that's some kind of benefit cost analysis, um, comparison of having a, a replaceable battery um, with the cost of charging infra, uh, installation of charging inf inf infrastructure, et cetera. Maintenance facilities also. Regarding the, the, the operational and governance models, that's also a business perspective, how that the whole solution will generate the value, uh, who will generate the value, and et cetera. So that's, that's, that's also um, one important aspect uh, uh, to be considered, uh, and actually the, the first one. Um, uh, so uh, on the other, because we have, uh, it's an environment which very heterogeneous in terms of the drivers, in terms of the barriers, uh, actually, the motives that each of the, the actors in the, in the network, uh, it is actually a network, any kind of um, engagement in transportation, logistics, supply chain, uh, actually includes a network where, um, which is very, uh, very complicated to, to, to be made and also to be uh, too long, uh, to be long lasting uh, with sufficient, or uh, let's say with satisfying uh, um, cap um, uh, effects. Uh, on different, uh, let's say, groups of uh, beneficiaries. So um, we have society, of course, we have the users of the service, we have the providers of the service, we have the municipality, etc. Software component, yes, uh, software component includes um, includes this solution which I will present today, and also uh, the solution that I will, uh, let's say, I will give a brief um, um, idea how it should uh, it should be uh, designed developed and it is actually uh, a component that uh, that uh, supports the organizational parts of the coordination and synchronization between the, the actors in a uh, in a uh, in a network regarding the hardware perspective uh, how do they develop the, the, the system uh, how many nodes do we have uh, which kind of nodes uh, we have just trans transferring points or uh, eventually, uh, some kind of short-term, uh, let's say, um, consolidation of, of shipments. Uh, of course, everything depends on the market segment. Uh, it cannot be, uh, as I mentioned, I will just uh, be, um, uh, let's say, a little bit faster. Uh, a couple of days ago, we had this, um, um, I think, one hour and 50 minutes. Uh, so I will, I will try to be as fast as possible with this. Um, so we have uh, uh, different, uh, let's say, cases, uh, Berlin, London, Paris, um, uh, different uh, uh, operational and micro hub models, so in the, uh, totally independent, uh, mixed, or uh, actually uh, uh, jointly utilized by by the many by by, by a number of uh, of the LSPs. Uh, so that is very uh, very important uh, uh, and is significantly influences on the. Um, uh, on the effectiveness, uh, especially efficiency of the solution. So in terms of cost, the utilization of micro hubs, uh, also the congestion in the, uh, in, the, um, in the city. Uh, so if you have a resource utilization in terms of last mile, first mile uh, deliveries, then you will also uh, maximize, uh, maximize those effects related to congestions, related to uh, emissions and et cetera. Uh, and of course, you will reach uh, some some very important aspects like economy, economy of scale, economy of scope, and etc. Uh, different kind of uh, uh, let's say configurations, designs of the micro hubs. This is, for example, a logistics facility, uh, uh, logistics hotel actually in uh, Paris. Uh, different modes of transportations are joined there. We have uh, we have also railways below and surface and etc. Um, uh, of course, uh, if we uh, have a private uh, uh, micro hubs, they can be also uh, mobile. Uh, so th this is also a good solution uh, in some cases for some kinds of, uh, uh, in order to, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, improve or maximize the coverage, uh, we have also these uh, um, collection and delivery points, uh, parcel lockers, 
uh, very well uh, uh, established uh, in in in, uh, in Europe. I think also I noticed in Quito uh, these kind of facilities uh, that uh, let's say provide uh, an additional and also uh, let's say contribute to the satisfaction of customers and also improve the efficiency of, of the first and last mile uh, delivery. Uh, Regarding the, 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 the location of the microcapsia, so this is just, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in practice, this is a uh, uh, medium problem that I implemented for uh, as a part of the, of the, of the uh, let's say, the whole approach uh, published, not, not, not still not published, it is under review. Um, uh, we, we finished it uh, recently, a couple of months ago. Um, so we have different, uh, let's say, alternative locations and et cetera. We have some kind of criteria. These criteria are also very important in practice, so where you will locate, but in practice, usually um, uh, that was the case in uh, Quito, uh, since the, the, the locations, uh, appropriate spaces are not so, uh, let's say, very uh, well, um, uh, they are scarce, yeah? You don't have a number of choices, you have a couple of choices which are very close to your, uh, actually, uh, targeted area. Uh, so, um, in practice, yes, you must choose uh, between uh, limited options, but still, uh, you will uh, you will apply a number of criteria in order to uh, in order to uh, to select the most important, uh, let's say, the the, 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 the um, uh, uh, an optimal, let's say, uh, a location for uh, for uh, uh, for first and last mile. Let's say operations actually for consolidation or transferring of uh, different kind of products. These are London, uh, for example, experiences in terms of the designs. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this part of the uh, of the problem is very challenging. Also, it can include uh, different, uh, of course, criteria, different constraints, and etc. It can be considered as integrated uh, to to other problems uh, um, which are also uh, are important in this case. Uh, fleet composition, uh, so fleet sizing and fleet mix, those are two components equally important. Uh, so uh, fleet mix, if you can, a wrong mix of, of your uh, bicycles, um, the, the, the drivers, the users will not be actually um, very well attracted by the, by the solution and that will cause, of course, a failure uh, and a lot and a, a lose of, of uh, investments. Yeah, so you need carefully uh, uh, to to select uh, which kind of uh, we, we, what would be the most important uh, characteristics of your uh, of your of our uh, design of the. Uh, so there are uh, a number of uh, criteria for functional, economic, exploitational, low capacity range, speed, battery charging time, and etc. Uh, they are mutually related, uh, and usually the practice is uh, to uh, to to uh, make a list of these criteria, to distribute these criteria to all the, the 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 interested groups, the beneficiaries, to receive their response in terms of their preferences, and to decide which uh, which uh, actually uh, what would be the design, the the, the, the pre preferred design. And that would be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, very uh, important to do uh, for each market segment, of course, because, for example, this is the champagne the distribution in London. Uh, so uh, some some commodities require uh, cool or freeze, etc. Um, uh, uh, fleet composition, fleet sizing can be considered also from the aspect of uh, uh, of. Uh, uh, let's say uh, together with uh, with the uh, routing problems. So because uh, routing in, impacts on fleet sizing. If you have inefficient routing, uh, you will have fleet which will be um, let's say uh, more than uh, necessary, and you will have of course uh, um, um, uh, low pro productivity or less than optimal productivity of your driver, uh, of your vehicles, um, and uh, of your system in uh, in general. Um, so that would be, um, uh, of course, when we talk about organizational, uh, uh, let's say, aspects, um, we are far away from uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, network uh, in uh, uh, in Quito. Um, in terms of the, uh, let's say, uh, the number of actors, in terms of uh, st strategic collaboration between the actors, so I'm 
actually, I'm emphasizing this collaboration, uh, as I mentioned, uh, resource uh, utilization, uh, sharing economy, um, uh, collaborative platforms, uh, customer centric, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, perspective. So, so uh, um, uh, or, uh, let's say, focusing on the customer's needs. Um, uh, are something, uh, let's say, are the most important aspects of uh, cooperations or collaborations, because in transport, collaboration and cooperation are actually okay. mutually, uh, let's say, as synonyms. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what is the idea of this network? So, we have, uh, we have uh, let's say, a strategic uh, collaborative network between the main actors uh, within, the, uh, uh, within the last mile and first mile. Uh, um, uh, let's say um, uh, a system, logistic system. We have suppliers, uh, um, freight transport operators. Um, uh, we have also uh, uh, maintenance service of vehicles. Uh, we have final customers of our service, and we have also our uh, service providers, um, 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 uh, which actually they are performing the the, the first last mile delivery. Uh, and uh, in the middle, we have uh, some coordinator, which will be or would be or could be a neutral uh, orchestrator, a uh, neutral trustee uh, uh, made by the together by all uh, these sectors or made by the municipality um, in order to coordinate. Of course, it must be, uh, let's say, neutral. Uh, so that's that's very important, uh, which is equipped with some kind of data platform. And this data platform is not the, only the routing uh, solution, but it includes some kind of, let's say, coordination, synchronization of activities between uh, all these actors in order to, it's a, a means of communication, but also it has uh, some kind of additional uh, features uh, in terms of uh, data management, in terms of visibility, in terms of transparency, in terms of uh, uh, reliability of, of, the whole, of the whole process, uh, the process of, Incoming flows to a micro hub or a micro hubs in the future. Uh, so I expect that um, it will be a number of micro hubs. So the situation will be much more complex than it is now. And in that case, you will have actually a network in order to, you need to have a network in order to, uh, let's say, maximize the efficiency of the system. Uh, in case network, of course, uh, centralized, like on this way or distributed or. Um, uh, so this is a general business model with some kind of, uh, let's say, um, a framework. This is a very well known Osterwalder's framework for uh, documenting the, the, the business model. So here, uh, actually, uh, at the, of course, now uh, we have one uh, segment. Uh, tomorrow we will have B two C, C two C, and etc. Uh, so. Uh, are uh, the key resources and uh, the value propositions. So what will be the, the, the value of the whole approach, uh, how to monitor the, 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 the efficiency of the, the effectiveness of the, uh, of, the, um, uh, of, the, of, the, of the models. These are some kind of, of the network, actually. Uh, these are uh, sub-models related to some specific, uh, let's say, um, um, aspects or let's say, some specific um, uh, segments of the service, so related to the suppliers and related to the couriers. Uh, so in general, uh, uh, the general one is the, 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 let's say, the most comprehensive one, and these are the sub-models, let's say, uh, step one, step two, until, until the general, uh, reaching the general, uh, general uh, let's say, um, coverage. Uh, governance is also very important. What would be your uh, rules responsibility? So because the, the, as the network, uh, let's say, increases uh, in, the, in its complexity, the number of factors, the number of uh, different views, uh, motives, barriers, then the network becomes more and more complicated to be, uh, let's say, sustained and um, all, uh, let's say, important aspects or, let's say, criteria to be uh, satisfied and etc. So from my point of view, uh, uh, if you don't know, uh, if you don't have a previous relationship uh, with some supplier, with some uh, service provider, you would need some kind of very strict formal, um, uh, let's say, um, engagement. Uh, so that means contractual, very, uh, very strict contractual forms. After that, um, uh, when when actually the times uh, time passes and the experience uh, becomes 
uh, let's say positive, then you would, uh, you would of course, um, um, uh, relax a little bit of those uh, 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 legal terms uh, uh, and um, and uh, base your relationships on some kind of inter, um, let's say, play between contracts and uh, relations, yeah, relational governance, actually, contractual governance. Here we have um, a data governance. So how that platform would uh, look like, that, that, that is not, not nothing new. Uh, we have uh, different platforms for different kinds of services, um, um, uh, uh, freight uh, exchanges, uh, digital marketplaces, uh, control towers, and etc. So that's actually, uh, so I'm not inventing anything new, uh, but uh, I'm just uh, extending the, 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 or let's say, um, uh, uh, I just think uh, it has uh, its own, uh, let's say, uh, purpose in this kind of in this kind of solutions as an ext and, uh, ex extended extension of existing platforms or as a separate platform related only to. Um, uh, software, uh, do we need a software? So we have, as I mentioned, efficiency as the most important, uh, let's say, criteria uh, in any kind of, uh, let's say, business. Um, uh, then we have uh, also, so, so with the routine software, we can reach uh, uh, some kind of satisfying uh, efficiency levels. Uh, we have multiple stops. Uh, so we don't have any, you know, only one pickup drop off point. Uh, we have uh, different points, uh, multiple points on the route in order to, of course, to reach the higher level of efficiency uh, to maximize the capacity, but the capacity is limited. Uh, we have also uh, some kind of preferred time windows when the businesses, the restaurant, the hotels uh, are open for or willing or uh, uh, capable to to uh, to perform their uh, let's say uh, pick up drop off um, uh, operations. Uh, we have real time updates. Uh, we have also uh, some 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 kind of monitoring uh, aspects like cost savings, like environmental benefits. Or some some solutions can also take into account and traffic considerations. Uh, but our solution doesn't take into account traffic consideration and real time update because it is uh, almost free solution. As you can see, all these technologies are totally uh, are totally free, almost free. My web page is not free; it costs a little bit. Um, so we have uh, we started first with the deck that in previous let's say time we, we uh, I um, invested a lot of my uh, let's say. Uh, Hours in uh, this kind of, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, adventure. Uh, so, uh, uh, and we came to a solution which we, we which was a desktop solution, but uh, 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 that solution could not provide uh, 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 could not provide some communication with the drivers uh, uh, and uh, do not provide, uh, uh, let's say, a mapping. Uh, uh, or let's say pro 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 projection of uh, routes uh, to a map which will be the map with uh, uh, and which can be the map with, uh, with traffic real time actually traffic uh, traffic uh, uh, status there. Yeah. So we have off street map. We have a V room as a as a software for a, uh, for a vehicle routing problems. Very efficient uh, and open source uh, optimization. Uh, uh, so uh, also we have uh, OSRM, which is used by the room as a backend for uh, for uh, for actually for uh, generating the routes. Uh, we have a web page uh, uh, which is which can be made by different technologies, which can be made in PHP in combination of PHP and some other technologies, HTML, JavaScript, and etc. Uh, for portability deployment and development, uh, I came to idea to use the Docker's, and they are uh, until now they they are very satisfied with uh, how the the the, the uh, let's say those kind of transferring the solution to different uh, users um, 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 is uh, going, and also uh, a web database which is on my uh, web page um, that is uh, that serves as a, uh, as a, a, let's say. Uh, as a record of uh, all the customers and all the 
uh, all the, uh, let's say, pick up and drop of uh, 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 amounts, and etc. What we uh, have uh, set, uh, let's say, achieved with this uh, solution until now. So we have, uh, let's say, user-friendly interface. We have uh, possibility to, uh, let's say, to enter the addresses or coordinates uh, into the system, into the database to register the user um, with, the, with its preferred, uh, uh, let's say, preferences in terms of uh, time windows, in terms of cap uh, okay, capacity limits are related to our bikes. Uh, do we have customizable parameters? Yes, but from central point, because uh, the, the idea uh, of this uh, of this application was uh, uh, was um, uh, to be a central as um, uh, it is related with the the, the, uh, the model that I already uh, in organizational uh, perspective I already showed. Uh, so it is uh, actually um, a, a centralized uh, um, a platform uh, which can provide a support to the drivers uh, on the field uh, by sending uh, an email with uh, with uh, uh, we include details. Yeah. Um, do we have uh, so? But the drivers cannot uh, uh, make some kind of uh, let's say adjustments on the route. So that's not possible. Why it's not possible? First of all, um, uh, first of all, the drivers would have a mobile application. That is another uh, let's say aspect of this of this problem. Um, uh, then we have optimized routes. Of course, uh, the, the the solution is very efficient in terms of. Optimization, it can handle uh, um, up to 200 uh, pickup drop off points, etc. Um, so, uh, a review uh, and edit of routes, yes, uh, but from the central point, not from the aspect of from the from the distance. That means from the real time updates, uh, actually, are not uh, possible because we are basing our solution on OpenStreetMaps, not on uh, on uh, Google uh, Google Maps. Uh, Yes, please. Interruption, but we need to have like a two minutes more to show that. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, so uh, as you can see, you may see your presentation later. Um, uh, uh, I will just uh, I will just demonstrate it in a live. Uh, there are some some uh, features to be uh, also addressed. This is on the other side. Let's say that this is a in-house solution. This is a market solution. They, they are using uh, the same technologies for development. You can see on their web page, but they are much more expensive. Okay. I will just, uh, so this is the, this is the, 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 the web, uh, let's say, uh, oh, it's not so visible, uh, but let's say that uh, we have, uh, uh, we have a number of customers. Yesterday we registered one, uh, customer, yes, it's, uh, it's Andana customer, so so it's here, Andana is here. We can see on the map also where the Andana is, for any case, in order to, to check if we enter the coordinates uh, uh, correctly. We, from these customers, we can make the orders. So, these are, this is the set of orders, for example, Tandana has 50 units, that's important to the units, the liters, the, 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 the number of shipments, kilograms, so the units in general, to, to deliver and to collect, actually, uh, to, to, yes, to deliver to Tandana and to collect uh, 30 units of something, the time windows, um, uh, from which to, uh, to, to which hour uh, he will be or she will be or uh, available and etc. Uh, then we have also uh, from those orders we may select uh, we may select a number of let's say uh, customers in a route uh, itinerary that's itinerary that we need to uh, that we want to uh, to cover by our activity as a uh, as a first last mile operator. Uh, so. We are just selecting on this way, uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, three, four, five. It's not a problem. We are saving this, this order. We are going to, uh, let's say, selected orders. We are finding the last order. It will be somewhere here. This is, it's today, yeah? 
we are clicking uh, here on the uh, let's say on this map and we are we are getting the solution so it is a very uh, let's say uh, 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 it is a very fast uh, very efficient and for sure optimized uh, solution we are emailing uh, our uh, solution to the driver <laughs> we are receiving the but uh, we have to have internet in order to receive. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have internet on our, uh, let's say, on our mobile phone. We have, no, I don't have internet. But uh, I can access to my, uh, let's say, it's, it is this email. I am clicking on this link. And I can see the route with some additional information in terms of what should be delivered, what should be picked up. So that's the solution. Uh, of course, uh, what is uh, what is very important? This solution uh, can handle uh, the street due, due, uh, due to uh, thanks to Open Street Maps, of course, uh, the, the street closures. Uh, it can handle also the charging stations. It can handle one or two or more depot stations. Um, uh, it can handle the, 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 the uh, um, this kind of uh, slopes uh, somehow by uh, importing some files with some information regarding some streets, uh, preference in terms of the delivery, which drive, which which uh, location we want to to visit first. Um, some kind of breaks in the delivery in terms of driver, for example, so service break, uh, or something like that. Uh, so let's say that uh, uh, that is actually uh, everything uh, very important. But the last stage is also the policy regulations. Without policies, without politics, nothing is possible, unfortunately. Uh, so mm -hmm. that is the last stage. But I think everybody knows. Hmm. What is the what, what would be the focus and what should be um, let's say addressed by the policy? Okay, so thank you for thank you. So, uh, are there some questions either here physically or virtually? <laughs> I have a quick one. Um, yeah. Did you try this uh, this product with vans, with electric vans, like uh, N category vans, or just with light electric vehicles? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Thank you, Ari. Uh, uh, actually, the solution can uh, you can develop your own profile in terms of vehicle. Here, there are two profiles: minivans and bikes. Um, but you can have regular bike, electric bike. This is electric bike. You can have regular bike. You can have also a foot because last mile delivery is something in, in some cases is the most efficient uh, by doing, uh, you know, by putting yeah, by a pied. Mm -hmm. So you can make a number of profiles. So that's not, uh, that's not, uh, let's say you can make all the profiles you need. All right, but have you tried? I mean, have you noted differences between types of electric vehicles when using this uh, application? No, actually, uh, the problem with uh, let's say the bad side of uh, uh, is the, our dynamics. So we are we were starting with uh, with the application with the research with the uh, you know before we had we had our customers uh, and we had our system. Uh, so uh, as you. No, you know, from, from quality assurance and the software testing uh, that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, the second stage is, is missing and we are actually now, uh, let's say, in some kind of uh, receiving the feedbacks from our, uh, from our um, uh, let's say, customers in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the efficiency of solution and et cetera. Uh, regarding my personal, uh, let's say, uh, comparisons or... Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, uh, try uh, that kind of uh, because this is this is a, a actually practical, uh, let's say, application. It doesn't have too much uh, with theoretical, and as you probably know, um, you know the theory, and you cannot publish this in academic paper. It is just uh, 
it is a business approach. Uh, 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 so, so the theory and the practice, there is some gap between them, uh, unfortunately, but yes, uh, that's that's for sure. So I was trying to, and I was focusing on the on the, on the let's say on the on the solution which would be uh, and could be a uh, good base uh, or uh, already let's say uh, applicable to the problem that we have here. I don't know if I addressed your question, but your question um, uh, gives me uh, some kind of. Let's say uh, some some something that I missed to to because of the time limitation. Yeah. No, it, it's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. Thank you. Uh, some other questions. Yeah. How does the website works? And 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 Gabriel, could you speak louder so the other can hear you? How does the website works? Because. Uh, in which system it relies to in order to do the calculations is on the the hosting or is it not hosting yes to my web page <laughs> uh, but I will show you later so we have uh, we have a uh, uh, I am the host uh, cbo dot dot com everybody can can access to to the system but you cannot use it because you need uh, you need the, the dockers um a number of dockers and uh that's uh, that's that's actually a necessary condition um so there is actually uh, a web database uh, which is on my uh, web page uh, which is hosted by my hosting provider and uh, uh that database is uh, actually collecting and uh, distributing all the necessary information of course there are components which are container con Containerized or uh, dockerized, uh, um, uh, which need to be installed on a computer of the user of the service. Um, uh, so, uh, and actually, this is the the, the fo our focus was on this. Uh, uh, let's say component. Uh, we don't have real time fleet tracking. We don't have GPSs on our uh, on our uh, bikes. We don't have uh, sensors on bikes in order to. to Monitor their, uh, let's say, performances to, uh, let's say, um, uh, um, conduct a predictive maintenance, very important component in the settings. So, it's... so this is one com complete solution, which provides, I think, very high level of satisfaction for, for the users of the service and for those who would, let's say, uh, coordinate or uh, Invest in the development of this solution. I, I, I mean, uh, municipalities, ministries, and etc. Okay. Some other questions. If not, let's thank Milo again and uh, continue with the last talk uh, um, that is going to be presented by Emilio. Emilio Garcia. Emilio is a master student of our uh, student program at, at, at the Politecnica, uh, 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 managed by the, the Department of Mathematics and Modern Math. Uh, he, he has finished uh, his studies and is writing his thesis on a subject related to, to uh, electric vehicle routine, and he will share uh, some of his thoughts with us. Okay. Hi, how are you doing? Good morning, everyone. Okay. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. <clears throat> yes, perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and thanks for having me here. It's a great opportunity to show you uh, some of the results, preliminary results we, we have on the routing of electrical vehicles over a steep street which is a main topic for us here in Ecuador, especially on the project on the historic center of Quito. Well, the motivation, we already know that by 2035, most of the biggest economies of the world will, will uh, stop selling combustion engine vehicles. And uh, that's uh, one of the biggest measures against uh, the climate change. 
uh, but uh, in Ecuador, it's not an exception. And from 2018, we start the pedestrianization of this of some streets of the story center of Quito. And um, by 2022, uh, the municipality uh, jointly with Solution Plus start with the uh, pilot of electric mobility on the story center of Quito. Uh, I think uh, Grace said uh, a lot of Solution Plus, so I'm gonna continue with this. And specifically the pilot uh, implemented in the story center of Quito has like a three main um, course. The first one was a mail delivery, the transportation of goods or groceries and the recycling collection. Uh, what was the aim of all these efforts was to uh, pave the way to the consolidation of low or zero emission uh, zone and the service center of Quito by the using of uh, electric cargo bikes for the last mile delivery. And let me stop here a little bit, but uh, this week uh, we had the opportunity to, to go to the field and, and have some feedback from them. And it was amazing the fact that we are changing lives with this kind of project. Uh, if none of you uh, online have visited uh, the story center of Quito, this is how the streets, most of the streets, looks like, uh, and as you can see, they uh, are really, really steep. And it's quite hard, actually, if you can see here, walking on them. So uh, now that we have seen the big picture, let's continue with the description of the problem. And basically, we are trying to use uh, electric uh, cargo bikes uh, for the last mile delivery, uh, departing from an urban consolidation center, which serves as a place where all the all the demand will be uh, will be uh, stored and then we'll from that point uh, all the demand will be covered by the electrical wires on the historic center of Quito. But uh, as I mentioned before uh, we have some uh, particularities of working on the historic center of Quito and I figured out to uh, came up with the four main of them. Uh, the first one is the steep streets, as you saw in the picture. Then we have the congestion. Since we are working on the historic center, you can uh, image how narrow the, the ways are and the streets are, and most of them are just one way direction. Then we have uh, another issue, which is uh, the consumption of the battery, because as I mentioned before, uh, we have a steep street. so that will impact in some ways uh, how uh, the battery is consumed throughout the day. And uh, we try to take into account also the load of the vehicle and the velocity, which will depend on the time of the day, uh, in the day, because it's the velocity at, let's say, 5 a.m. It's not the same uh, in, the, in one uh, street. It's not the same as the one, uh, let's say, at, at noon. So yeah, that, that had uh, some impact on the consumption of battery. Uh, also, uh, there are another uh, operational constraint uh, regarding the vehicles. That is the uh, time of the time to recharge the battery, which is really high, considering that that will take like from four to five hours, and the shifts uh, of these uh, workers will take eight hours so yeah uh, it's quite prohibitive to charge to have charge in between a shift and well taking all these considerations we try to minimize the travel time so uh in the shaded in the shaded area here we can see the historic center of quito we have a sample of 10 clients which are the blue dots and uh, the Urban Consolation Center, which is the place where all the bicycles will depart to serve all of the all of the clients on the story center of Quito. So mathematically, uh, we start working with this and we create a network with all of the, the nodes. And we try to uh, make it a complete network, complete connected network. So that means that all the nodes are 
connected to each of them. And what we are seeing here, just the half of the, 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 the picture, because as I told you, uh, we have uh, to consider the, the slow streets. And, and here, as um, Luis Miguel said, we are just considering a flat uh, surface. So uh, let's add another dimension, in this case, the altitude. And this is how the, the network will look like in a three dimension. And well, this will help us not just only to see how the network will look like in a 3D dimension, but also uh, will affect the dynamics of vehicles. And as you can see here in a two dimension setting, we have uh, two main uh, forces that the vehicle has to overcome in order to move the boom to point A to point B. In this case, uh, FD is a dragging force, the FR is a rolling resistance force, and if we add another uh, dimension, we uh, start playing with the uh, gravitational force. So uh, yes, th this change a lot uh, uh, how the dynamics of consumption at the end will uh, will change. Yeah, uh, and yes, we, we have uh, previous wars that uh, started uh, back in the 2014 with the uh, with a, a, a chapter in a book of Paulo Todd, which established uh, the green vehicle running problems, which is start uh, with the aim to reduce the pollution. And after uh, the time has passed on, uh, we now are looking for to replace in all the combustion engine vehicles to uh, the electric vehicles. And yeah, throughout the time we 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 have been uh, we have seen an enrichment on the and the problem, what I mean with the enrichment of problem, is like adding a new thing uh, that can complete an, an image of a reality, like the time windows. And if you see the last two uh, reference here, uh, in 2001, uh, we have a, a research on vehicle running problems with the streets, but in this case it's for uh, combustion engine vehicles, and it was uh, done by Carlos Bronner, and it was uh, done in a place which has a similar geography as the center story of Quito, particularly that was on uh, Viña del Mar in, in Chile. And the last one was one uh, performed by Permian Fontaine in 2022, which uh, also takes into account the vehicle roaring problem for uh, e-cargo bikes in, in this case, and the low dependency with the time of times. Between uh, these two uh, reference, we find uh, that we can add uh, uh, some value because there is some gap between them respect with the electric vehicles. In this case, the e-cargo bikes. So now let's see the model. What, what do we want to do? Here is first, we want to uh, design a feasible route. Those feasible routes must visit uh, each customer just once. So in that case, we don't have uh, any uh, split deliveries. Then we have to satisfy uh, the demand of the, uh, obviously the, of the clients in that visit. And the route must respect the battery uh, limitation of the car and also the capacity of the car. Then uh, we have also uh, to consider all the aspects I mentioned before on the consumption of a battery with the goal of minimizing the total, time, the total travel time. This is a denotation of how we define the model, more mathematically speaking. And we have a, a set of customers, the depots is where all uh, the bicycles depart to serve the clients. Then we have a, a homogeneous uh, vehicle fleet, that means that all are the same vehicles with the same coast, Syria. Then we have a planning horizon. The planning horizon you can see it as uh, the shift, basically, like the, the time that we are planning to work with the vehicles. Then the, the capacity of the vehicle, which is how, how much load can carry the vehicles on, throughout the route. Then, uh, then we have the maximum uh, battery capacity, which 
is the capacity of battery, uh, which turns out to be the the range that, that we 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 have to to move with that battery. Then we have the demand, the demand of each client, the service uh, time we, we we take to serve the client. Then uh, we have the velocity, which will depend on the time throughout the day. And uh, the last two, which is uh, one in red and the one in blue, are nonlinear functions. And these parameters uh, will add some kind of uh, layer of complexity on our model. And that's why I've, we, we, we figured out that will be a great idea if we uh, use uh, discretization of our network that will explain later on what discretization means and how does it look like. But we came up with a time space low spend network uh, and the model is defined by a directed graph. When I mean, uh, what, what do I mean by it? With a directed graph is that it's not the same if we move from point, from point A to point B, it's not the same if we move to B to A. So we will have like two uh, different connections between them to, to show the, the path to go between back and forward. Uh, then uh, we are going to represent uh, the nodes that we see in, uh, in the graph, like a triplet where we will have the, the name of the node or, or the code of the node, the time, and and Q, what, why, 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 why do we have here? Uh, okay, why do we have here T? Because we are going to discretize the time, and let's say if we have four hours, and we are going to discretize uh, by hours, we are going to have uh, uh, I uh, in, instead T, I I one, I two, I three, I four, I zero also. And the same case with Q, because we're going to discretize the load that we're carrying on throughout the throughout the route. Then we have uh, the set of connections, how we are going to connect each of the of the nodes of the of the network. And basically, uh, we have uh, the weights of the art, the arts they, that you can see them as the coast. Going from one art to another, to one, one node to another, and we will be represented by by two parameters. In this case, the time travel and the battery consumption. But in order to to get all the information, we have to have a some kind of preprocessing phase. Where, for instance, as you can see here, we are going to depart from the Urban Consolation Center to get to the flight number one, number nine, sorry. And from that, uh, we're going to get the shortest path between these two nodes. Then we are going to have the average slope throughout the route and also the distance. With the distance, we already can compute uh, the travel time, which will be uh, done by this formula. And then we can process uh, the, com the consumption of battery. Uh, I won't get into the detail, but basically uh, it will depend on the three forces I mentioned before. And then we can compute. And after all the computation, we can have the consumption of the battery. As I mentioned before, how, how this uh, discretization will look like if you can see here, uh, we have the client J, for instance, and we are putting a fixed number on the time, which is four in this case. And we are going to vary all the uh, possible discretization of the load. As you can see here, one, zero, one, two, three, and so on. We can do the same methodology to get all the possible combinations for J and also for I, and how we are going to connect, basically, if we can satisfy the demand and if we can satisfy the time, for instance, uh, if we start uh, time two and we have a uh, travel time of two, we have four, time four, then we, are, uh, th then we are going to arrive to J at time four. So yeah, we can, we can 
we can create a link between these two these two uh, nodes and that we can how can we build all the network and uh, this is uh, the mathematical model but I won't get into the formulas but the goal here is basically to minimize to, to minimize the total type of time regarding uh, just uh, visiting each customer each once then all the vehicles uh, must leave uh, the, deep, the depot at most once. Then we have the full conservation. That means that if a vehicle get into um, a node, must leave uh, that node also. And we have the battery consumption. So uh, with this model, we construct uh, a computation of, we, we perform a computation of, a computation of uh, experiment. experiment. And we noticed uh, at the beginning that if we leave uh, the battery, the one percent of the battery uh, available to use on on the so by 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 the model, uh, there will be uh, no that uh, constraint will never be uh, used because we are going to have so much battery that we'll never use that. All the all all the battery. So uh, what we do, uh, we choose the largest uh, the route with the most uh, consumption in this part, and then we take uh, like five percent from that, and we establish that as the limit of of that uh, battery available for for the model. Then uh, okay, that's why we fix that. And then we, we, we do the same uh, experiment number two, and then we reduce again uh, the battery. And now we we see that we have a, a great uh, result here. And as you can see here, the consumption of each of the roots of the solution are uh, uh, evenly distrib distributing the consumption of the battery, which is, is a great thing actually. But uh, there's no such a thing as a free launch. And we can see here, like uh, the bad part of it, that we are increasing the distance uh, of, the, of the routes and also the time uh, we, we use to, to go throughout the, the solutions. But uh, now we reach that point and we, we said, OK, uh, what, what is my benchmark right now? And since we are considering the slope of the streets, we said, okay, let's say uh, that we don't consider this time uh, the, the slopes and let's see what, what happened. And as you can see here, uh, now the battery consumption of each road uh, are really, uh, really, really low comparing with the one uh, taking into account the slopes of the roads. So when we don't take uh, that into consideration, we are overestimating the or underestimating the consumption of the of the battery in the case when we don't have uh, considering the slope. And this is pretty much how the solutions will look like. As we saw, uh, we have three roads. I don't know if you can see here, but here is one. Then the pink one is here and the uh, orange one. So uh, as we move and we reduce the availability, the availability of the battery, we can see that the, the roots change a little bit. This again change. And when we uh, do not consider the, the slope on, on the model by keeping all the same, we reach the same solution as the one when, when we have the 100% of the battery available for the model. Now, we said, okay, we, we try this with 10 clients. What will happen if we increase the number of clients and we increase it to, to the number of 20, 30, and 50 uh, clients? And also, we are doing the same, uh, the same, uh, Experiment, but uh, considering or not considering the, the slope with a restriction on the battery, 
And again, we can see here that uh, the, the battery consumption in average on the roots of the solution are pretty uh, uh, small comparing with the one uh, taking into account the slope. So we built a time space load network uh, to solve the EPRP. And we try to take into account all the factors, operational factors of doing this uh, kind of work on the historic center of Quito. And then uh, we have the no, we notice that if we ignore the slopes of the streets on sorry center of Quito, we uh, we will end up having solutions that in real life won't be practical actually. Uh, on future works, uh, we are trying to add path flexibility. As I mentioned before, we were uh, just uh, trying to get the shortest path between two of the nodes. But what will happen if we don't choose uh, the criteria as the shortest path, but uh, the shortest path, but with the minimum uh, slope on that road, that will be another thing to, to play around with. And also the dynamic decretization on the, the experiments I didn't mention, but we were discretizing uh, our time uh, horizon uh, of one hour, and we were discretizing it by minute. And what will happen if we don't decretize by minute, but let's say five minutes or 10 minutes? That's something that we will uh, try out. And lastly, uh, we'll ask you the, this question. So which is the best path between two points? And yeah, you can have the path that minimizes distance. You have the path that minimizes minimize time and the one that minimizes swimming, for instance. And this one is my favorite, the one that, that minimizes the time until I get to the ice cream. But yeah. Uh, this is uh, the question that we, we, we have when we take into account the road uh, network information. So yeah, we have uh, not only one best path, but only it will depend on, on the criteria we want to, to add. Thank you. Thank you, Emilio. Are there any questions either here or uh, or different. Sí, yo. Yo. Between the two points, uh, which is not you take uh, because uh, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily constant. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, uh, perhaps I was really fast on that slide, but let me go back a little bit. Uh -uh. Okay. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we get all the information through the path from, in this case, uh, from UCC to nine, and yes, we have the information of all the all the streets that the vehicles has to travel to, all right? And each of uh, down the street have uh, a slope, right? They, they, they are a specific slope. And what we do here is just to average all of them. And we put like the path had, a, had an average of a slope H, J, that's it. We, we take the, the average of all the slope that the vehicle travels. And it doesn't matter if the slope is in, in different directions, for instance. Got it. And, um, Thank you. Yeah, actually, what, another thing that I didn't mention is the fact that we, when, when we are uh, going down the hill, uh, we are not uh, we we are not using the same uh, the same the same consumption function for the battery because yeah we know that we are uh, down the hill then we won't use uh, the battery at all yeah 
Thank so, you. Uh, Milos, if you don't have a question. Yes, I would like to, to add something. First of all, I want to say that this is a very advantageous, uh, let's say, work for a master thesis. But that's not, uh, let's say, strange since uh, the candidate Emilio is born on 24th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is Luis, yeah. Um, this number of, uh, let's say, alternative paths, uh, I remember to, uh, I, I just uh, wanted to mention. Um, uh, and also regarding this kind of peer routing problems and the gap between the solutions in practice and the theoretical optimums. Uh, so in practice, and that was a research uh, uh, made by MIT uh, in collaboration with Amazon. So they collected historical records of the of the drivers uh, doing this kind of uh, first uh, last mile, first mile, uh, let's say, uh, tasks. And there was, uh, for example, there was a huge gap between uh, between the uh, the optimal route and the route that the driver uh, preferred to use. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so they applied uh, a machine learning approaches in order to, uh, let's say, uh, improve the solution obtained by the by the algorithm. So that's that's very interesting, uh, let's say, point um, regarding this kind of alternative, uh, let's say, optimal or uh, um, uh, the preferred ways of. Uh, in comparison with optimal uh, optimal solutions that are obtained by the uh, by the by the by the uh, algorithms, yeah. Um, also, one question: uh, This is a solution that completely, uh, let's say, addressed the, the, the needs of the in terms of the number of. But I noticed uh, a very high computational time. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans to uh, improve the efficiency of the solution? See, I, I, I just emphasize that it is not really considering the number of, of, of uh, uh, let's say, points, but uh, it's some kind of challenge, yeah? Yeah, it is actually a, a challenge. And we thought about it. And yeah, uh, since we are working on a standard network, you can imagine that we are working on a huge number of, no of nodes that we're, we're creating. And yeah, uh, we are, uh, at this point, we are trying to match with uh, models that are in the li 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 literature that are closely to our problem. And then we are going to analyze what is really happening with the constraints and see the algorithm, how, how, how it's working with a benchmark to try to figure out what is happening with the time cost. Yeah, it's, it's really, really high actually. And uh, in this scenario, you solved it uh, with uh, some kind of exact algorithm. Which one? No, it, it was just pure uh, Grobi. Uh, it's an algorithm behind yes. Grobi for sure. Yeah. And that's uh, most, most advanced. Branch and card. Branch and card. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Thanks. Thanks, Emilio. Really. But now specifically one we are designing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Okay. Are there some other questions? I think we are uh, a bit, a bit. Over time, sorry everybody for that, uh, and thank you for your patience. No, uh, um, now I, I think Grace will close the, the workshop now. Yes. So, in the name of of the Urban Living Lab Center and the Solutions Plus Project, I just want to give a big thank you to all the presenters, all the presentations, the very interesting discussion that we have today. Uh, big thanks to the Polytechnical School, the Escuela Politécnica Nacional, Luis Miguel Torres, and the Modet Math for your hospitality on this whole week of a lot of learning and knowledge um, shared. And that, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing this space. Uh, and thank you, everybody in, in, in Argentina, in Berlin, for coming and listening and stay to the end. And we hope we, we will have more of this type of. of See you. Thank you. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice day. Congratulations. Have a nice day.